Gold Transportes Aereos Flight 1907 was a Boeing 737-28A on a scheduled domestic passenger flight from Manaus, Brazil, to Rio de Janeiro. On the afternoon of 29 September 2006, it collided in mid-air with an Embraer Legacy 600 business jet over the Brazilian state of Mato Grosso. The Boeing 737 broke up in mid-air and crashed into an area of dense jungle, killing all 154 passengers and crew on board. Despite sustaining serious damage to its left wing and tail, the Embraer Legacy jet landed safely with its seven occupants uninjured. The accident was investigated by the Brazilian Aeronautical Accidents Investigation and Prevention Center, Portuguese Centro de Investigação e Prevenção de Acidentes Aeronauticos (CENIPA), and the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board (NTSB), and a final report was issued issued in 2008. CENIPA concluded that the accident was caused by air traffic control ATC errors combined with mistakes made by the American pilots on the legacy, while the NTSB determined that both flight crews acted properly and were placed on a collision course by ATC, deeming the legacy pilots' disabling of their TCAS system to be only a contributing factor rather than a direct cause. The accident, which triggered a crisis in Brazilian civil aviation, was the deadliest in Brazil's aviation history at the time. It remains the second worst plane crash in Brazil, after TAM Airlines Flight 3054 in 2007. Aircraft and crew Boeing aircraft and crew The Gold Transportes Aereos twin turbofan Boeing 737-28A aircraft, registration PRGTD, was a new short field performance variant, with 186 seats 36 economy plus and 150 economy seats. It made its first flight on of August 2006 and was delivered to Gol on 12 September 2006, less than three weeks before the accident. There were six crew members and 148 passengers on board the Boeing airliner. The six crew members and 105 of the passengers were Brazilian, the remaining passengers were of various other nationalities. The crew consisted of Captain Deceo Chavez Jr., 44, First Officer Tiago Jordão Crusoe, 29, and four flight attendants. The captain, who had also been serving as a Boeing 737 flight instructor for Gol, had 15,498 total flight hours, with 13,521 in Boeing 737 aircraft. The first officer had 3,981 total flight hours, with 3,081 in Boeing 737 aircraft. Goal Flight 1907 departed Eduardo Gomez International Airport in Manaus on the 29th of September 2006 at 15:35 Brazilian Standard Time (BRT), 18:35 Coordinated Universal Time, en route to Rio de Janeiro Galeão International Airport, with a planned intermediate stop at Brasilia International Airport. Topic. Embraer aircraft and crew The twin turbofan Embraer Legacy 600 business jet, serial number 965 and registration N600XL, newly built by Embraer and purchased by Excel Air Service Inc. of Ronkonkoma, New York, was on a delivery flight by Excel Air from the Embraer factory to the United States. It departed from São José dos Campos Professor Urbano Ernesto Stumpf Airport SJK, near São Paulo, at 14.51 BRT 17.51 Coordinated Universal Time, and was on its way to Eduardo Gomez International Airport Mau in Manaus as a planned en-route stop. The XL Air flight crew consisted of Captain Joseph Lepore, 42, and First Officer Jan Paul Palladino, 34, both U.S. citizens. Lepore had been a commercial pilot for more than 20 years and had logged 9,388 total flight hours, with 5.5 hours in the Legacy 600. Palladino had been a commercial pilot for a decade and had accumulated more than 6,400 flight hours, including 317 hours flying as captain of Embraer ERJ-145 and ERJ-135 jet aircraft for American Eagle Airlines. The ERJ-145 and ERJ-135 aircraft are regional jets of the same family as the Legacy. Palladino had also served as first officer for American Airlines, flying MD-82, MD-83 and Boeing 737-800 aircraft between the U.S. and Canada. 
Both pilots were legally qualified to fly the Embraer Legacy as captain, two of the five passengers were Embraer employees, two were XL Air executives, and the fifth passenger was the New York Times business travel columnist Joe Sharkey, who was writing a special report for Business Jet Traveler. Topic. Collision At 16 hours 56 minutes and 54 seconds BRT 19 hours 56 minutes and 54 seconds Coordinated Universal Time, the Boeing 737 and the Embraer Legacy jet collided almost head-on at 37,000 feet 11,000 meters, approximately midway between Brasilia and Manaus, near the town of Matupa, 750 kilometers 470 miles southeast of Manaus. The left winglet of the Embraer sheared off about half of the 737's left wing, causing the 737 to nosedive and enter an uncontrollable spin, which quickly led to an in-flight breakup. When the 737 was hit, the left engine remained on the remaining wing attached to the aircraft. The Boeing 737 crashed into an area of dense rainforest, 200 kilometers (120 miles) east of the municipality of Peixoto de Azevedo. All 154 passengers and crew on board died and the aircraft was destroyed, with the wreckage scattered in pieces around the crash site. The Embraer jet, despite serious damage to the left horizontal stabilizer and left winglet, was able to continue flying, though its autopilot disengaged and it required an unusual amount of force on the yoke to keep the wings level. With radio relay assistance from Polar Air Cargo Flight 71, a Boeing 747 cargo aircraft flying in the area at the time, the Embraer's crew successfully landed the crippled jet at Cachimbo Airport, part of the large military complex Campo de Provas Brigadero Veloso, at about 160 kilometers miles from the collision point. Passenger and journalist Joe Sharkey described his experience on board the Embraer in an article for the New York Times, titled, "'Colliding with Death at 37,000 Feet, and Living'", filed on 1 October 2006, and it had been a nice ride. Minutes before we were hit, I had wandered up to the cockpit to chat with the pilots, who said the plane was flying beautifully. I saw the readout that showed our altitude, 37,000 feet. I returned to my seat. Minutes later came the strike. It sheared off part of the plane's tail. Too, we later learned. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Detention and charging of Embraer crew. Immediately after the Embraer's emergency landing at the Cachimbo Air Base, Brazilian Air Force and Agência Nacional de Aviação Civil (ANAC) officials detained and interviewed the flight crew. The two black boxes. The cockpit voice recorder CVR, and the flight data recorder FDR, were removed from the Embraer, and sent to São José dos Campos, São Paulo, and from there to Ottawa, Canada, at the Transportation Safety Board TSB laboratories, for analysis. In an initial deposition, the Embraer flight crew testified that they were cleared to flight level 370, approximately 37,000 feet 11, meters above mean sea level, by Brasilia ATC, and were level at that assigned altitude when the collision occurred. They also asserted that they had lost contact with Brasilia ATC at the time of the collision, and their anti collision system did not alert them to any oncoming traffic. On 2 October 2006, the Embraer's captain and first officer were ordered by the Mato Grosso Justice Tribunal to surrender their passports pending further investigation. The request, made by the Peixoto de Azevedo prosecutor, was granted by Judge Tiago Sousa Nogueira e Abreu, who stated that the possibility of pilot error on the part of the Embraer crew could not be ruled out. The Embraer crew were forced to remain in Brazil until their passports were released to them on 5 December 2006, more than two months after the accident, after federal judge Candido Ribeiro ruled there were no legal grounds for "...restricting the freedom of motion of the foreigners." Prior to their scheduled departure to the United States, the crew were formally charged by Brazilian federal police with "...endangering an aircraft," which carries a penalty of up to 12 years in prison. The two pilots had to explain why they had not switched on the transponder. They were allowed to leave the country after signing a document promising to return to Brazil for their trial or when required by Brazilian authorities. They picked up their passports and flew back to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Search and recovery operation The Brazilian Air Force the Forca Area Brasileira or FAB sent five fixed-wing aircraft and three helicopters to the region for an extensive search and rescue operation. 
As many as 200 personnel were reported to be involved in the operation, among them a group of Kayapo people familiar with the forest. The crash site of Gulf Flight 1907 was spotted on 30 September by the Air Force, at coordinates 10 degrees 29 s 53 degrees 15 w, 200 km 120 miles east of Peixoto de Azevedo, near Fazenda Jarina, a cattle ranch. It was reported that rescue personnel were having difficulty reaching the crash site due to the dense forest. The Brazilian Airport Operating Company, Infraero, at first indicated the possibility of five survivors, but a later statement from the Brazilian Air Force, based on data collected by their personnel who rappelled to the crash site, and local police who assisted in the SAR effort, confirmed that there were no survivors. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva declared three days of national mourning. The FDR and a non-data part of the CVR from the Boeing 737 were found on 2 October 2006 and handed over to the investigators, who sent them to the TSB for analysis. On 25 October 2006, after nearly four weeks of intensive searching in the jungle by about 200 Brazilian Army troops equipped with metal detectors, the memory module of the Boeing's cockpit voice recorder was found. The module was discovered intact, separated from other wreckage pieces, embedded in about 20 cm of soil, and was also sent for analysis by the TSB in Canada. On 4 October, the recovery crews began moving the bodies to the temporary base established at the nearby Jarina Ranch. The FAB deployed a C-115 Buffalo aircraft to transport the bodies to Brasilia for identification. The recovery teams worked intensively for nearly seven weeks in a dense jungle environment, searching for and identifying the victims' remains. All of the victims had been recovered and identified by DNA testing by the 22nd of November 2006. Topic: Investigation. The accident was investigated by the Brazilian Air Force's Aeronautical Accidents Investigation and Prevention Center (CENIPA) and the US National Transportation Safety Board (NTSB). In accordance with the provisions of ICAO Annex 13, the NTSB participated in the investigation as representative for the state country of manufacture of the Boeing, state of registry and operator of the Embraer, and state of manufacture of the Honeywell avionics equipment installed in both planes. Once the black boxes and communication transcripts were obtained, the investigators interviewed the legacy jets flight crew and the air traffic controllers, trying to piece together the scenario which allowed two modern jet aircraft, equipped with the latest anti-collision gear, to collide with each other while on instrument flights in positive control airspace. The Embraer's flight plan consisted of flying at FL-370 up to Brasilia, on airway UW-2, followed by a planned descent at Brasilia to FL-360, proceeding outbound from Brasilia northwest bound along airway UZ-6 to the Terry's Fix, an aeronautical waypoint located 282 nmi 324 miles, 522 km northwest of Brasilia, where a climb to FL-380 was planned. According to the filed flight plan, the Embraer was scheduled to have been level at FL-380, proceeding towards Manaus, while passing the eventual collision point, which was about 307 km miles northwest of Terres. The Embraer's crew asserted in their depositions and subsequent interviews that they were cleared by Air Traffic Control ATC to FL-370 for the entire trip, all the way to Manaus. The actual transcript of the clearance given to the Embraer's crew prior to takeoff at São José dos Campos at 14 hours 41 minutes and 57 seconds, as later released by CENIPA, was November 600 X-Ray Lima, ATC clearance to Eduardo Gomez, flight level 370 direct Pocos de Caldas, Squawk Transponder Code 4574, after takeoff perform or end departure. The Embraer's crew's altitude clearance to FL-370 was further confirmed after their handoff to Brasilia, during which they had the following radio exchange with ATC at 1551. This was the last two-way radio communication between the Embraer's crew and ATC prior to the collision. <laughs> <laughs> Embraer flight and communication sequence The Embraer took off from São José dos Campos at 14.51, reaching FL-370 at 15.33, 42 minutes later, where it remained until the collision, ATC maintained normal two-way radio contact with the Embraer up until 15.51, when the last successful radio exchange with the Embraer was made on VHF frequency 125.05 MHz with Brasilia Center. 
At that point the Embraer was just approaching the Brasilia Vore. The Embraer overflew the Brasilia Vore at 1555, four minutes later, and proceeded northwest bound along UZ-6. At 1602, seven minutes after crossing the Brasilia Vore, secondary radar contact was lost with the Embraer, thus stopping the display of the Embraer's reported altitude mode C on the controller's radar screen. No attempt was made by either the Embraer or Brasilia Center to contact each other from 1551 until 1626 when, 24 minutes after the loss of secondary radar contact, Brasilia Center called the Embraer and received no reply. Brasilia Center then unsuccessfully attempted to contact the Embraer six more times, between 1630 and 1634. At 1630, the Embraer's primary radar target became intermittent, and disappeared completely from the radar screen by 1638, eight minutes later. Brasilia Center unsuccessfully attempted to effect a handoff of the Embraer to Amazonic Center at 1653, by calling the Embraer in the blind. The Embraer, on the other hand, started calling Brasilia Center, also unsuccessfully, from 1648 and continued with 12 more unsuccessful attempts until 1653. Some limited contact was made at that point, but the Embraer was unable to copy the Amazonic Center frequencies. The Embraer then continued its attempts to reach Brasilia Center, seven more times until the collision. The collision occurred at 16 hours 56 minutes and 54 seconds BRT 19 hours 56 minutes and 54 seconds Coordinated Universal Time at FL 370, and it was confirmed that neither Traffic Collision Avoidance System TCAS system had activated or alerted its respective crew, nor did any crew see the oncoming traffic visually or initiate any evasive action prior to the collision. While both planes were equipped with TCAS, it was later determined that the Embraer's transponder had ceased operating almost an hour earlier, at 1602, rendering both planes unable to automatically detect each other. At 16 hours 59 minutes and 50 seconds, about three minutes after the collision, Amazonic Center started to receive the Embraer's secondary radar reply, with its correct altitude and last assigned code. At 17 hours 0 minutes and 30 seconds, Amazonic Center unsuccessfully attempted to contact the Embraer by radio. The Embraer started calling on the emergency frequency, 121.5 MHz, immediately after the collision, but as it was later determined in the CENIPA report, the emergency transceivers in the area were not operational and thus the crew was unable to reach ATC on that frequency. At 17 hours 1 minute and 6 seconds, the Embraer established contact on the emergency frequency with a Boeing 747 cargo aircraft, Polar 71, which attempted to relay to ATC their request for an emergency landing, and continued to to provide relay and translation assistance to the Embraer until its eventual landing. At 17 hours 18 minutes and 3 seconds, the Embraer contacted the Cachimbo Airport Control Tower directly to coordinate its emergency landing there, and landed safely at Cachimbo at 17 hours 23 minutes and 0 seconds. Topic. Goal 1907 Flight and Communication Sequence Goal 1907 took off from Manaus at 1535, flying southeast bound along UZ-6 and reaching FL-370 at 1558, 23 minutes later, where it remained until the collision. There were no radio or radar contact problems with the flight until its handoff to Brasilia Center. There were no known attempts by ATC to warn Flight 1907 of the conflicting traffic. Topic. NTSB safety recommendation On 2 May 2007, the NTSB issued a safety recommendation document that included an interim summary of the investigation to date, as well as some immediate safety recommendations that the NTSB believes should be implemented by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration FAA to enhance flight safety. The NTSB reported that the Embraer apparently experienced a Traffic Collision Avoidance System TCAS outage, unknown to its flight crew prior to the collision, according to the Cockpit Voice Recorder CVR. Preliminary findings in the ongoing investigation indicate that, for reasons yet to be determined, the collision avoidance system in the legacy airplane was not functioning at the time of the accident, thereby disabling the system's ability to detect and be detected by conflicting traffic. In addition, CVR data indicate that the flight crew was unaware that the collision avoidance system was not functioning until after the accident. The NTSB added that the design of the Embraer's avionics is such that the non-functioning of the TCAS that apparently occurred is shown by a small static white text message, which may not be noticeable by the flight crew. 
The NTSB noted, using only static text messages to indicate a loss of collision avoidance system functionality is not a reliable means to capture pilots' attention because these visual warnings can be easily overlooked if their attention is directed elsewhere in the flight environment. Based on its observations, the NTSB recommended to the FAA that design changes be implemented to improve the noticeability of TCAS enunciation, and that the FAA advise pilots of all aircraft types to familiarize themselves with the details of this accident, with the ways in which a pilot could inadvertently cause the loss of transponder and or TCAS function, and how to recognize a loss of function. Topic. Final reports. Topic. CENIPA report On 10 December 2008, more than two years after the accident, CENIPA issued its final report, describing its investigation, findings, conclusions and recommendations. The CENIPA report includes a «conclusions» section that summarizes the known facts and lists a variety of contributing factors relating to both air traffic controllers and the legacy jet's flight crew. According to CENIPA, the air traffic controllers contributed to the accident by originally issuing an improper clearance to the Embraer, and not catching or correcting the mistake during the subsequent handoff to Brasilia Center or later on. CENIPA also found errors in the way the controllers handled the loss of radar and radio contact with the Embraer. CENIPA concluded that the XL Air pilots also contributed to the accident with, among other things, their failure to recognize that their transponder was inadvertently switched off, thereby disabling the collision avoidance system on both aircraft, as well as their overall insufficient training and preparation. Topic. NTSB report. The NTSB issued its own report on the accident, which was also appended to the CENIPA report with the following probable cause statement. The evidence collected during this investigation strongly supports the conclusion that this accident was caused by N600XL and Goal 1907 following ATC clearances which directed them to operate in opposite directions on the same airway at the same altitude resulting in a mid-air collision. The loss of effective air traffic control was not the result of a single error, but of a combination of numerous individual and institutional ATC factors, which reflected systemic shortcomings in emphasis on positive air traffic control concepts. The NTSB further added the following contributing factors. Contributing to this accident was the undetected loss of functionality of the airborne collision. Avoidance system technology as a result of the inadvertent inactivation of the transponder on board N600XL. Further contributing to the accident was inadequate communication between ATC and the N600XL flight crew. Topic: <laughs> Conflicting CENIPA and NTSB conclusions. CENIPA and the NTSB collaborated in the accident investigation and, while agreeing on most of the basic facts and findings, the two organizations arrived at conflicting interpretations and conclusions. The CENIPA report concluded that the accident was caused by mistakes made both by ATC and by the XL Air pilots, whereas the NTSB report focused on the controllers and the ATC system, concluding that both flight crews acted properly but were placed on a collision course by the air traffic controllers, according to Aviation Week. The U.S. National Transportation Safety Board NTSB strongly disagreed with the Brazilian conclusions regarding the legacy pilot's actions as a causal factor, noting, the crew flew the route precisely as cleared and complied with all ATC instructions, as did the Gol Airlines crew. Aviation Week adds that the Brazilian military operates that country's air traffic control system, conducted the investigation and authored the report. Topic. Aftermath Topic. Aviation crisis The crash of Flight 1907 precipitated a major crisis in Brazil's civil aviation system, which included lengthy flight delays and cancellations, ATC work to rule slowdowns and strikes, and public safety concerns about Brazil's airport and air traffic infrastructure. Historically, Brazil was ruled by its armed forces from 1964 until 1985. 
Since then, a civilian government has taken over, but the country's airways as of 2009 continued to be controlled and operated by the Brazilian Air Force FAB, and run by its generals, overseen by a civilian defense minister. Most of Brazil's air traffic controllers are military non-commissioned officers, and all area control centers are run by the FAB. In October 2006, as details surrounding the crash of Flight 1907 began to emerge, the investigation seemed to be at least partly focused on possible ATC errors. This led to increasing resentment by the controllers and exacerbated their already poor labor relations with their military superiors. The controllers complained about being overworked, underpaid, overstressed, and forced to work with outdated equipment. Many have poor English skills, limiting their ability to communicate with foreign pilots, which played a role in the crash of Flight 1907. In addition, the military's complete control of the country's aviation was criticized for its lack of public accountability. Amid rising tensions, the air traffic controllers began staging a series of work actions, including slowdowns, walkouts, and even a hunger strike. This led to chaos in Brazil's aviation industry, major delays and disruptions in domestic and international air service, stranded passengers, cancelled flights, and public demonstrations. Those who blamed various civilian and military officials for the growing crisis called for their resignation. On the 26th of July 2007, after an even deadlier crash in Brazil, TAM Airlines Flight 3054 on the 17th of July 2007 claimed the lives of 199 people. President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva fired his defense minister, Waldir Perez, who had been in charge of the country's aviation infrastructure and safety since March 2006, and was widely criticized for their failures. On the same day, Lula appointed former Supreme Court President Nelson Jobim to replace Perez, and vowed to improve Brazil's ATC system. <laughs> <laughs> Legal action Civil <laughs> litigation <laughs> 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 On 6 November 2006, the families of ten of the deceased filed a lawsuit for negligence against Excel Air and Honeywell, alleging that the Excel Air pilots were flying at an incorrect altitude and that the Honeywell transponder was not functioning at the time of the collision. Other suits were subsequently filed on behalf of other victims, with similar allegations against Excel Air and Honeywell. The victims' families also filed suits against other U.S.-based defendants, including the two Embraer pilots, as well as Raytheon, Lockheed Martin and Amazon Tech manufacturers of Brazil's ATC equipment, and ACSS manufacturer of the Embraer's TCAS. The attorney representing the Embraer crew, Miami-based Robert Torricella, responded to the allegation that the crew was flying at an incorrect altitude. By stating that according to international regulations, clearances and directives issued by ATC supersede a previously filed flight plan, and in this case, the flight plan cleared by air traffic control at the time of departure required the Embraer to fly all the way to Manaus at 37,000 feet and, absent contrary directives from air traffic control, the Embraer was obligated to follow its cleared flight plan. As the findings of the investigation are made public, we are confident that XLS pilots will be exonerated. A Honeywell spokesperson stated that, "...Honeywell is not aware of any evidence that indicates that its transponder on the Embraer legacy was not functioning as designed or that Honeywell was responsible for the accident." On 2 July 2008, U.S. District Court Judge Brian Cogan of the Eastern District of New York dismissed the family's suits against all the U.S.-based defendants under the premise of forum non-convenience. Without ruling on the merits of the cases, and while allowing discovery to continue, Kogan recommended the Brazilian court system as a more appropriate jurisdiction for the dispute. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Criminal proceedings. On the 1st of June 2007, Marillo Mendes, a Brazilian federal judge in the small city of Sinop, Mato Grosso, near the crash site of the Boeing, indicted the two Embraer pilots and four Brasilia-based air traffic controllers for exposing an aircraft to danger. On the 8th of December 2008, he dismissed charges of negligence against the pilots but left in place a charge of imprudence. He also dismissed all charges against two of the four Brasilia-based controllers and reduced the charges against the other two, but supported bringing new charges against a fifth controller, based in São José dos Campos, the Embraer's departure point. 
On 12 January 2010, his ruling was overturned by Judge Candido Ribeiro in a federal court in Brasilia, reinstating the negligence charges against the pilots. On 26 October 2010, a military court convicted air traffic controller Sergeant Jo Marcelo Fernandes dos Santos, sentencing him to 14 months in jail for failing to take action when he saw that the Embraer's anti collision system had been turned off. Santos will remain free pending the outcome of the appeal process. Four other controllers were acquitted for lack of proof. On 17 May 2011, Judge Mendez sentenced air traffic controller Lucy Vando Tibercio de Alencar to a term of up to three years and four months but ruled he is eligible to do community service in Brazil instead and acquitted Santos on charges of harming Brazil's air transport safety. On 16 May 2011, Judge Mendez sentenced the two pilots to four years and four months of prison in a semi open facility for their role in the collision, but he commuted the sentences to community service to be served in the United States. Brazilian authorities accused the pilots of turning off the legacy's transponder moments before the accident and turning it on again only after the crash, but it was denied by the crew in a deposition via videoconference. Mendes said in his sentence that pilots had failed to verify the functioning of equipment for more than an hour, a length of time he called, an eternity, in aviation. On 9 October 2012, Brazilian federal prosecutors announced that they had successfully appealed the sentence of the pilots, asking to increase their sentences by 17 months, a total of five years and nine months. The new trial was scheduled for 15 October, with the pilots again facing trial in absentia. On that date, the court upheld the prior convictions, but modified the sentences to 37 months for each, requiring that the pilots report regularly to authorities and stay home at night. In popular culture In 2007 Discovery Channel Brazil aired A Tragedia du Vu 1907, The Tragedy of Flight 1907, a documentary about the disaster. The Mato Grosso mid air collision was featured in Phantom Strike, a season 5 2008 episode of the Canadian TV series Mayday called Air Emergency and Air Disasters in the United States and Air Crash Investigation in the UK and elsewhere around the world. The dramatization was broadcast with the title, Death Over the Amazon, in the U.S. and Radio Silence, in the United Kingdom. The flight was also included in a Mayday Season 8 2009 Science of Disaster special titled, System Breakdown, which looked at the role of air traffic controllers in aviation disasters. <laughs> See also List of accidents and incidents involving commercial aircraft List of civilian mid-air collisions 2015 Senegal mid-air collision, very similar accident involving a Boeing 737 and a mid-size business jet Varig Flight 254 Another Boeing 737 that crash landed in 1989, only 40 miles from Gulf Flight 1907's crash site 1973 France mid-air collision <laughs> Notes <laughs>